My absolute favorite way to start my day is with 30 minutes of knitting and reading in bed. Today, I'm gonna to share with you some tips and tricks on how to teach yourself to knit and read at the same time. The first step to being able to knit and read at the same time is being able to knit without looking. So I want you to pause the video here and get up and go grab the simplest knitting project that you have. Something that's either a lot of garter stitch or just knitting in the round is going to be perfect for this next exercise. All right, now once you have your project, I want you to knit until you're kind of in the middle of the row. If you're working on a flat project or just in, a, in the round project, just work until you have a bunch of knit stitches coming up. Go ahead and look down at your hands, get all set up, get ready to knit. And on your next stitch, I want you to just squinch your eyes a little bit so that the stitches are just a little bit blurry and try working one stitch like this. Okay, now open your eyes and look down at the stitch that you created. Check it. If it looks right, then great. Keep trying this, kind of squinting your eyes, working a stitch, making sure it's all good. If it did not work, then look at the stitch and see what happened. Maybe did you go down into the row below or did you split a stitch and start working on really seeing how it feels in your hands and your fingers to make a knit stitch. You can watch yourself do it and then kind of slowly like close off your vision little by little until you get comfortable making a stitch without being able to fully see it. Once you have that kind of squint and knit method going for you, try it next when you're watching a TV show or a movie or watching YouTube, looking away from your knitting for a few stitches. So kind of build up to things. Maybe try one stitch, then try two, but look away completely. Stay looking at the screen while you make a stitch or two. And then again, stop and check and make sure everything looks okay. Keep practicing and practicing. This is not just going to happen overnight. I know many of you are probably knitting while watching TV already, so this is the best place for you to practice. You will be able to knit and read once you're able to watch through a show and only have to glance down like every 10 seconds or so. One other thing you may want to try just to help get yourself feeling safe without looking at your knitting is to just completely close your eyes no distractions, no TV, nothing to read or look at, but just have your eyes closed and knit a few stitches. Be patient with yourself. The more that you do this, the better you are going to get at it. An excuse to just keep bringing your knitting with you everywhere. Eventually, you will be able to not only knit while watching your favorite TV shows at home or knit and read, but actually take your knitting out and about, go into a movie theater, and even knit in complete darkness. The next step for successful knitting and reading is choosing the right project. You want something that is very simple to work on because if it's too complicated, not only do you need to constantly look down and check your stitches, make sure you're doing the right things, but you're also kind of losing that ability to stay focused on reading the book. The hands down, in my opinion, easiest thing to work on is something that is knit in stockinette in the round. That means that all you have to do is do the knit stitch over and over again in the round. You're not having to worry about flipping back and forth and finding that first stitch like you do in flat knitting. The only thing your hands are gonna really need to be looking for and feeling for is that beginning of round marker, unless you choose to just take it out and not worry about it. So some of the best projects, in my opinion, for this are going to be the bodies of sweaters. If there's no shaping and no other stitch pattern in them, you just have endless amounts of stockinette. 
socks are really, really great. Of course, you'll want to do the casting on and the ribbing ahead of time. Do a round or two of stockinette. You're ready to go on the leg. Same thing if you get to the heel, that's not going to be a good part of the sock. But once you're past the heel and any decreasing you need to do, just straight stockinette tubes are going to be perfect for knitting and reading when you're getting started. Another item would be hats like this muscle bro hat that I am working on. If you knit it to pattern, you have endless stockinette to do. I did put some ribbing in the middle and I will say that I have been working on my knitting without looking for many, many years. And I am just now getting to the point where I feel comfortable enough to do something other than stockinette or garter stitch. And I've been able to start incorporating knitting and ribbing, rather not knitting, <laughs> ribbing into my knitting and reading process. When I'm at home knitting and reading, it's not as important that a project is so set up for that knitting without looking like it would be if I'm at the movies and knitting in the dark. So when I'm at home, I'm a little more flexible with things. And this is my current knitting and reading project. It is the Quadrophenia by K.F. Jones. The reason I would say it is not the perfect knitting and reading project is that it's knit flat for one. So whenever I get to the beginning or end of a row, I do need to look down, check in on things, make sure I'm starting that row. Once I have a couple of stitches in, then I'm able to look back up at my book again and keep going. The other thing is that there is shaping in this. It is a triangle. So I have um, increasing and I have something to deal with at the beginning and end of each row. But for knitting and reading at home, it's actually pretty good because I only need to look down for a couple of seconds to handle that beginning and end of row stuff. And then I have tons of garter stitch in between. So once you've got knitting without looking down, it's time to talk about actually combining knitting and reading. And that starts with setting up your space. There are lots of different tools that I like to use while knitting and reading that I have been acquiring over the last couple of years, but you don't need to necessarily go out and buy anything to get started with knitting and reading today. The number one most important thing about knitting and reading a book is having your hands free to actually do the knitting. So the only thing that you absolutely need is some kind of book prop. If you don't have anything on hand, I would recommend grabbing an extra pillow or two, setting it in your lap. You can prop your book up there, or maybe taking a blanket if that's a little easier to like mold and manipulate to some kind of maybe triangular shape and you can hold your book in your lap. Or if you would prefer it, you could sit or stand at a table. If you have some kind of an e-reader with a case, you may be able to set it upright on a table. Something that I really, really love using is this book prop. It is called a flippy and I will have this linked down below. I use this mostly with my Kindle to read and I will show you how I do that in just a minute, but it's also really good for um, watching things on tablets or phones or if you have your pattern on a tablet, it props it up at just the right angle that is really easy for reading. Another tool that I have started using a lot more as of late is a lap desk. What the lap desk does is it brings up my flippy and my book up to more of an eye level, which is really important as I don't want to start to strain my neck and my eyes and my back and everything as I am enjoying my knitting and reading time. I know we have a lot of people out here who probably don't like using an e-reader and you like using a paper book, but what are you supposed to do about keeping the pages open? There is something that I love. It is called a book bone. It is basically a rubberized weight and I will show you how to use it here in just a moment. It will hold your book open for you, keeping your hands free to work on your stitches, work on your project. And it is seriously the best like eight or nine dollars that I have ever spent. The one issue I found is that the flippy book prop and hardback books don't really work together. 
but what you can do is either kind of mold a blanket in order to hold up your book and use your book bone, or I found that a skein of yarn is just the perfect size to prop up your book on a flat surface. Now it's time to get into the real practicality of things like how do you turn pages while knitting? Let's talk about knitting with an e-reader first. So I've got my knitting in my hands, I've got my book all set up in front of me, and when I reach the bottom of the page, I put both needles in my left hand to hold them, I release my yarn from my right hand, and take it and just simply tap the page. This is a really good time to stop and look down at your knitting if you need to, because I'm not gonna lose my place on the page as I am moving then to the top of the page. So if you do need to check on something, it's always a great time to pause. Then while I'm reading down the page, I'm just knitting and knitting. And again, when I reach the bottom of the page, I just pause quickly, drop my yarn, and again, just take my hand and tap the screen. With a paper book, it is more or less the same thing. I just Put both needles into my left hand and use my right hand to turn the page. But I want to show you something really cool about this book bone that keeps it easy and one-handed. These instructions come with the book bone, so I'm not making this up on my own, but I wanted to share because it's really, really cool. When you start out reading, you place the book bone at the bottom of both pages. You read down. Once you get to here, you can one-handed move the book bone up to the top of the other page, finish reading here, eyes come up here, read down. Once you get to the bottom, again, one-handed, needles are in the left hand, move it to the top. Now, when you're ready to turn the page, you can do that one-handed as well. Just take the right hand end of the book bone and kind of scoop the page up, and then you can Put it back down in the starting position to start again at the top of your page. When you can knit without looking, it opens up your world to so many possibilities. You can hold conversations with people while having eye contact, which is really great for Zooms and meetings. You can knit the movies or anywhere in the dark, like at the theater. You can also knit while reading, as we discussed in today's video. It does take time to be able to knit without looking, so please don't give up. Keep practicing. If anything, here is your excuse to knit more than ever. You can tell people you are training to learn to knit without looking. I know that a lot of people always ask me, why don't I read with audiobooks? Because then you don't have to worry about not looking at your knitting. You can work on any project that you like. And that is so true. Audiobooks are amazing for knitting and reading together, but I just know that audiobooks don't work for me. I cannot concentrate on an audiobook no matter the complexity of the activity that I pair it with. So for me, having a simple knit and a book is the ultimate combination. It has made me seriously so happy to share with you today one of my absolute favorite activities. If you are also a reader and you are interested, I am going to share my Goodreads account down below so you can keep up with all of the books that I am reading. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye!